another day, another adventure, and I'm on my way to Los Angeles. Where are we at right now? Uh, Connor's Plumbing. What city? Los Angeles. Yes, and what are you about to eat? Hot dog. Hot dog! Eat a taco or two. LA style taco truck on the street. Oh. Dude, we found it's it's exactly two dollars wow. each. Wow. In LA. Can't believe it. He had bought this in a state sale from a gentleman and it was in a desk and he took it out of the desk and I was telling him, oh, I'd like to start to facet. He sold this to me, but man, it mm. is. It's my first full morning in LA, and I've already started the Southern California adventure. Well, I picked up a 1940s MDR machine this morning. Probably the absolute first generation of that machine from the late 1940s, which is super, super cool. On my way to a gem show to see some gems and meet some friends, but first, an appropriate California lunch at In-N-Out Burger. Grilled cheese, animal style. So I just arrived at this gym show and wow, it's giving me some real Tucson vibes with all the hotel rooms set up, the showrooms, very exciting. For the right size person, you could kind of well, it. Well, it's a Maori hook. If you turn it up, see, it's, it's your old oh, Maori it hook. It right? is a Maori hook. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a big fishing hook. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> This place, the place where I currently am. <laughs> and I am here too. And we are about to what? Eat some crabs? We're all crabs on yeah. this boat. It's the next day and I have arrived at legendary gem cutter Meg Berry's house. I'm going to be crashing here for a little while, hanging out in the rural beauty. Here's my new bedroom. Lots of nice windows. I've already been cleaning today to move some stuff off here and organize this. But yeah, that's my room. Not too bad. And using this as my base camp for uh, reaching out to the different miners and cutters that are around here and also going up to LA to do the deep research of the early American fasting movement. So today is kind of a maintenance day, cleaning the car, getting everything cleaned up and unpacked and stored and everything else. I'm currently in LA at an open studio and somewhere in here I'm gonna find gem painter Angie Crabtree, but dead end, so let's keep looking. I can see it's a pure love. Yeah. Should be done on So they had to make it symmetrical from their head. Oh, wow. And so it's like wonky. Right? Like, like okay, a lot of things that I see. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah it. like it doesn't look right. And this right here is actually the bottom of the stone. So when you 
So here's where I'm gonna be hanging out for the next couple of months. Meg Berry was kind enough to let me take half of this room from her. So I spent the last day cleaning it up and moving things around and making the books beautiful and hanging up some curtains and stuff so that I can start to do some cutting work. I got my light up here, camera over here, and I can basically just sit here and cut some stones and you guys just get to watch it from basically this angle. So I've just driven down to San Diego and I am approaching the Jewelers Exchange building. I think there's lots of friendly uh, faces in there, people that I personally know. But today I'm gonna go see Matthew Milstead, who's up on the fourth floor, the rough dealer. Garnets, tan Looks like strong bones. Yeah. So let's see, a little, 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 little tour of Casa Milstead. Or maybe it's Chateau Milstead. Meg Berry over here. The Milstead Estate. Yeah, the Milstead Estate. Cutting beautiful gems overlooking downtown San Diego. So while I was in Matthew's office, my birthday present arrived in the mail from Victoria, and I just opened it up, and holy smokes. A custom commissioned painting of a sapphire that Victoria cut for me for my engagement ring. And for my birthday, she had someone in Poland who does gemstone paintings paint it for me. And man, it looks so cool. I'm, it's Friday. I spent most of the week uh, setting up my fast sitting machine and cutting some stones, getting back into the swing of being a gem cutter. But today I'm back on my research, just arriving at the Fallbrook Gem and Mineral Society. There is a secret collection of very old faceting machines here that I'm coming to see. Meg Berry is teaching a faceting class, so let's check this out. in a built-in uh, a built-in desk and the head just sits right inside of there so cool and here's an old uh, prismatic with a spring up head and I think they've now renamed him Smilodon Forensis yes. so and then these are just some other unusual ones that we've gotten Garth also did a lot of collecting up at the Champion Mine, and that's another site that's now closed. In the secret back room, looking at old diamond cutters tools, here's an old brooding machine old uh, cast iron laps and some really beautiful wire pullers some really nice old uh, handmade technology that looks really really beautiful you know, almost like clockwork in the way that it is and then a dreaded asbestos powder even a collection of old photos showing this stuff in use in what I presume to be New York City because uh, a lot of the stuff says New York, New York, and I don't know who else would be doing diamond cutting except for people in New York. This machine is from the 1940s or maybe early 50s and they're still using it for teaching which I think is so cool. And as usual, I couldn't resist a good deal on rare and vintage books that they had in the museum. What a cool club. A museum, a lapidary room, a place where you can do talks, and uh, yeah, probably one of the coolest clubs that I've been to this year. Huh. 
I just spent another afternoon at the Fallbrook Gem and Mineral Society. Yesterday I was here and I'm in the hunt for these collection of really old machines from the 30s and 40s that the, that the club once had. We don't know if they still have them, but today I was able to go through some archives and find all of the acquisition papers for the machines and descriptions of the machines by the person that put the collection together. And man, I really, really hope that we can find these machines. Some of them are so rare, I've never ever seen them before other than, you know, publications from the 1940s, an old Willems jam peg. So I really hope we can find these, uh, these machines. But I did pick up more books for the collection, just a huge pile of books. Uh, they're just almost giving these away. The prices are so good, I just can't say no. So anything old or interesting, I'm just getting it because why not, so. Another week in paradise. See you next week for some mining adventures, Thanksgiving potlucks, and so much more.